Rosselin of Compiègne c. 1050 c. 1125, better known by his Latinized name Rosselinus Compendensis or Ruslinus, was a French philosopher and theologian, often regarded as the founder of nominalism. Biography <inaudible> 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 Rosselinus was born in Compiègne, France. Little is known of his life, and knowledge of his doctrines is mainly derived from Anselm and Abelard. He studied at Soissons and Reims, was afterwards attached to the Cathedral of Chartres and became canon of Compiègne. As a monk of Compiègne, he was teaching as early as 1087. He had contact with Lanfranc, Anselm and Saint Ivo of Chartres. It seems most probable that Rosselinus was not strictly the first to promulgate nominalistic doctrines, but in his exposition they received more definite expression, and being applied to the dogma of the Trinity, attracted universal attention. Rosselinus maintained that it is merely a habit of speech which prevents our speaking of the three persons as three substances or three gods. If it were otherwise, and the three persons were really one substance or thing una res, we should be forced to admit that the Father and the Holy Spirit became incarnate along with the Son. Rosalinus seems to have put forward this doctrine in perfect good faith, and to have claimed for it at first the authority of Lanfranc and Anselm. In 1092–1093, however, a council convoked at Soissons by the Archbishop of Reims condemned his interpretation, and Rosalinus, who was accused of tritheism, recanted the doctrines attributed to him, but only out of fear of excommunication and even stoning to death by the Orthodox populace, for later he returned to his early theories. He fled to England, but having made himself unpopular by an attack on the doctrines of Anselm, he left the country and repaired to Rome, where he was well received and became reconciled to the Catholic Church. He then returned to France, taught at Tours and Lochmenic in France where he had Abelard as a pupil, and finally became canon of Besançon. He is heard of as late as 1121, when he came forward to oppose Abelard's views on the Trinity. He was also sent a letter by Theobald of Etampes for having denigrated wrongfully the sons of priests. Of his writings there exists only a letter addressed to Abelard on the Trinity, in which Rosalinus "...belittles Abelard and makes merry over his castration." Hauro brings forward his name in connection with a text, "...sententia de universalibus secundum magistrum r. Notices et extr. De Quelx Manuscra. Lat. v. Paris, 1892, 224, but this is a conjecture. We have as evidences of his doctrine texts of Anselm, Abelard, John of Salisbury, and an anonymous epigram. His share in the history of ideas and especially his nominalism have been exaggerated, his celebrity being far more due to his theological tritheism. Rosalind's nominalism, or sententia vocum According to Otto of Friesing and Rosselin Primus Nostris Temporibus Sententium Vocum Institute Gesta Friedrichi Imp. in Monum. German. Hister. Script. XX. 376 literally, was the first in our times to institute the opinion, theory of words. But the chronicler of the Historia Francia, cf. Bouquet, Requail des Hist, des Gauls et de la France, 12, Paris, 1781, 3, b. c. mentions before him a Magister Johannes, whose personality is much discussed and who has not yet been definitively identified. What constitutes the sententia vocum? To judge of it we have besides the texts mentioned above which bear directly on Rosalind an exposition of the treatise De Generibus et Speciebus 13th century, wrongly attributed to Abelard by Victor Cousin. The «sententia vocum» was one of the anti-realist solutions of the problem of universals accepted by the early Middle Ages. 
resuming porphyry's alternative mox de generibus et speciebus illid quidem sive subsistent sive in nudus intellectibus posita sint the first medieval philosophers regarded genera and species substance, corporeity, animality, humanity either as things or as having no existence, and applying to this alternative a terminology of Boethius, they derived thence either res things or voces words. To the nominalists universals were voces voices, which means, one, above all that universals are not res, that is that only the individual exists, nam cum habit eorum sententia nihil esse praetor individuum. De Jena, et spec. 524. Nominalism was essentially anti-realist, too, that universals are merely words, flatus voces, e.g., the word, homo divisible into syllables, consonants and vowels. Fuit autumn, nemini magistri nostri Rossellini tam insana sententia ut nullum rem partibus constare velle, sed sicut solus vicibus species, eta et partes ascribat abelard, liber divisionum, ed. Cousin, 471. A li utique dialectici, qui non nisi flatum vosus putant universalis esse substantias, et qui culum non aliad quiant intelligere quam corpus, nec sapientium hominis aliad quam animum, prorsus a spiritualium quaestionum disputation sunt exuflandi. Anselm, de incarnatione verbi, p. 285. Opera Omnia, Volume 1. Ed. F. S. Schmidt, 1938. Alias ergo consistit in vicibus, licet haec opinio cum Rossellino suo fear omnino evanurat John of Salisbury, Metalogue, 2, 17. The universal is reduced to an omission of sound flatus vosus, in conformity with Bertius's definition, nihil enum aliad est prelatio vosus quam aeris plectro lingua percussio. Rosalind's universal corresponds to what is now called the universal in voci in opposition to universal in re and universal in intellectu. But this theory of Rosalind's had no connection with the abstract concept of genus and species. He did not touch on this question. It is certain that he did not deny the existence or possibility of these concepts, and he was therefore not a nominalist in the fashion of Tyne or in the sense in which nominalism is now understood. That is why, in reference to the modern sense of the word, some call it a pseudo-nominalism. John of Salisbury, speaking of nominalist sector, Metalogue, 2, 10, gives it quite another meaning. So Rosalind's rudimentary, even childish, solution does not compromise the value of universal concepts and may be called a stage in the development of moderate realism. However, because of his position as the first medieval philosopher to challenge medieval realism, he has been invoked as a forefather of modernity. Rosalyn was also taken to task by Anselm and Abelard for the less clear idea which he gave of the whole and of composite substance. According to Anselm he maintained that color does not exist independently of the horse which serves as its support and that the wisdom of the soul is not outside of the soul which is wise defied Trinit, too. He denies to the whole, such as house, man, real existence of its parts. The word alone had parts, eta divinum paginum pervertit, ut eo loco quo dominus partum pisus asi comedis partum hugis vosus, quae est pisus asi, non partum re intelligere cogitur cousin, p. Abelardi opera, 2, 151. Rosalyn was not without his supporters, among them was his contemporary Rambert of Lille, and what the monk Herriman relates of his doctrine agrees with the statements of the master of Compiègne. Universal substances, says Herriman, are but a breath, which means aos de sapientium numero merito esse exuflandos. He merely comments on the saying of Anselm characterized by the same jesting tone, a spiritualium quaestionum disputation sunt exuflandi. PL 256A and says that to understand the windy loquacity of Rambert of Lille one has but to breathe into his hand Manuk ori ad mota ex sufflens Mon Germ Hist 14 275 
Topic: Tritheism of Rosalind. Rosalind considered the three divine persons as three independent beings, like three angels, if usage permitted, he added, it might truly be said that there are three gods. Otherwise, he continued, God the Father and God the Holy Ghost would have become incarnate with God the Son. To retain the appearance of dogma he admitted that the three divine persons had but one will and power audio, Quod Rosellinus clericus dissit in tres personas esse tres res ab invisum separators, sicit sunt tres angeli, et tamen ut una sit voluntas et potestas aut patrum et spiritum sanctum esse incarnatum, et tres dios vir posse dici si us us admittere letter of Anselm to Falks. This characteristic tritheism, which Anselm and Abelard agreed in refuting even after its author's conversion, seems an indisputable application of Rosalind's anti-realism. He even argues that if the three divine persons form but one God, all three have become incarnate. There are therefore three divine substances, three gods, as there are three angels, because each substance constitutes an individual, which is the fundamental assertion of anti-realism. The ideas of the theologian are closely linked with those of the philosopher. <laughs> Notes <laughs>